Let's check this stuff out first. That little island there. Important for any reason at all? Like, probably not, but these are just mushrooms. Those aren't really helpful. There is a boat, which if we knew where we wanted to go with the boat, might be helpful, but we don't. So, not. That's mostly junk, but it does seem like this was once a boathouse. That also looks like some kind of village or maybe even a beaten down hut. Can't tell if that's currently in use or not. Looks like it might have seen better days. Other than that, just keep on going, see what we find. Crashing waves. Sounds cool. Relax. As soon as I say that, I'm sure we're going to find that there's some enemy that pops up out of nowhere and ambushes us. Those deer. I just can't trust them, can you? I just wanted to see what the plant that was. Not an important one, but now we know. This looks like an outpost. And by this, I meant that. But also, probably this as well. Although there's enough wreckage here, that there might be some stuff for us to look at. Typically, whenever we see these. Whoa! Hell, whoa! I did not see you at all! I just. <laughs> oh. Almost headbutted my microphone there as I jumped out of my seat. Camera angle, not doing us too many favors there. Because apparently there was an enemy right next to us that we just didn't see. Alright. Drown her, buddy. Get him. Get fried. Hey, it's it. Not quite. Now you're done. Okay. So, that, no, that's not a monster, that's a wild animal, that's another deer or buck. Yeah, what is the deal here, though? Huh? Where does this connect to? It looks like this is sort of a land bridge. Oh, yes. We might have been able to cross here previously. This is going to lead us to the southern island. Southern larger landmass. We checked some of this area before. This is near where that really strong basilisk was. But I don't think we actually checked this exact corner here. This is a different hidden treasure that we've not yet seen, which could also be Al, very out of our league. Um, well, we know what kind of enemy it is. Some kind of water hag. Bill Jag. Because we have learned. God. Apparently, Igni is amazing against these guys. Hit ya? I did not hit ya. Um, also, don't have the stamina at the moment to do this. This is what we really want to do. Not nearly as effective as I was hoping it would be. But if you can also just, like, non stop the fire attacks, then that's cool too. We've probably learned more about them in our bestiary since the last time we fought them, unless, of course, they are technically just an iteration of water hags and there's not anything new for us to learn for that reason. That might be the case, and that's kind of what happened to us with the super counters that we saw in the past. Hey, over here. Please stop running away. Oh, really? Just had to be like that, didn't you? No, stop that. Oh, and you are decapitated now, apparently. Okay. That Bill Jag is no more. The previous one dropped some quite good crafting items for us. Another water hag mutagen. Infused dust? Not sure if they've seen that. So yeah, that's good stuff. Then we're guarding some kind of treasure, so we definitely want to take that wherever it is. 
In theory, it's more in this direction, but I feel like there's definitely a chance that there's more than just one chest here. There's going to be the, the main one, which is apparently going to be this. Actually, red, which is normally a quest indicator. That might trigger something else. Yeah, there's actually... There are several things happening here. Let's take the loot first and foremost. That's a crossbow. This gives a key attached to a crumpled note and a crumpled note. Let's read a crumpled note. I always said Musky was a clever pup. He understands more words than quite a few men. He can do all sorts of tricks. Sit, roll, and if you give him a scrap of bacon, he'll even shake your hand. But today, why, he's outdone himself today. I look, and there's Musky, running in from the field, carrying something in his mouth. I think, maybe it's a hare. Maybe I'll be able to whip up a stew, sell the fur. But no, it was a sack, all covered in blood, so no wonder he sniffed it out. I look inside, and inside, there's a key, a little one, all engraved and ornamented, like it fits some fancy chest or box. So I think, maybe there's treasure hidden hereabouts, and that's what this key's for. But I think I'll go for a walk, see what I can see. If I find it, I swear to Melatelli, Muskie's gonna eat nothing but veal for the rest of his days. That blood, that blood on the sacks got me a bit worried, though. But I'll take a thick club with me, so if anything pops up out of the bushes, you'll get a thumping. You don't live but once, so you might as well make some risks. Might as well take some risks, I always say. Okay, and it's actually a full-blown quest? Let's track that one, then. Yeah. Let's see. I'm curious what level it says it is. That's gonna be a treasure hunt, right? It is... 20, it says. Which is... Probably a little too much for us, actually. Mid... Maybe upper teens. Probably our limit right now. So... Let's see what else we can loot here. There were these tracks of some sort. The other red thing I was noting before. I think that might have mostly just been leading us to this guy here. Who we've obviously now found. So if there's anything else over here in this immediate vicinity, then we can definitely check that out. But I think that that quest is going to have to wait a little bit longer. We're close, but we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, let's head back. We cross back over the land bridge. Maybe swamp bridge is more accurate. Could even take that boat if we wanted to. But this is this place is kind of cool. So let's check this out. Go back up to the northern part of the island, or the northern island. And see if there are any more drowners over here that want to sneak up behind us. Or at least, let's loot the ones that we took out previously. And yeah, I think we're going to find that there are more chests here. Ones that we would have been looting, had we not had those drowners try to uh, pop us on the back of the head. So usually, like I was saying before, in and around, yeah, these wagons, it's a good place to find stuff. Are still, yeah, some loot remaining from the previous enemies we fought here. Or no, that's, uh, that's actually wild animals that the wolves took out, I think. And is there anything else here? Yeah, there is. Okay. Sheepskin, that's not great. Take it. Oh, yeah, and those guys are coming for us, like, right now, in fact. It's probably a good thing we were pointed in this direction, otherwise we might have had history repeat itself a little bit here. I swear I was pressing the AD button. None of that. None of that either. Just that. Okay. Dwar Dwarven spirits. Definitely still more wolves. Uh, what was that? 
this is trash. I mean, I guess we have enough inventory space right now that we could take it, but it's not any good. So normally we would pass on something like that. Normal rarity sword. Also, oh, this is probably the one we were looting as we were getting attacked initially. That was the first granor that we fought is right here. Was maybe a better way to phrase that. Okay, so if we continue along the coastline, then I think that will probably take us nearby where those wolves are right now. So I'm trying to eye our mini-map. Uh, that mace is also going to be junk. As is that. Yeah, trying to eye our mini-map to make sure these guys don't surround us when we're not paying attention, but I think we are probably going to end up heading in that direction either way. That looks interesting. Okay, uh, well, I mean, part directly in front of us. You even... Huh? Oh, you were sleeping. Great about that. You were starting to get up. Didn't fight you while you were actually asleep, but... Yeah, this is another pack for sure. You look like a ward. Yeah, you are. I'd like to ideally uh, get multiple of you with one evening is why I'm waiting. That. Oh, and you. Hello. Where did you come from? Get you both. Probably didn't have to actually attack the ward, but he's now gone as well. Well, that's another wolf behind us. Huh? Oh no, that's actually a crown. Okay, well, don't really feel the need to fight every single enemy that we find along the shore here. Mostly just that like, we're probably gonna have to run into these wolves either way at some point. Is there anything here at this little camp? Of sorts. I was hoping there'd be lootable stuff in those crates, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Enjoy living, freak, while you can. So this is that little area that I was looking at earlier. That seemed like it might be some import. Order some kind of castle, almost. Fortification. Castle is a strong word. Is there anyone up here? There is. Okay. What are you looking at? Buying on those darn Nilf Guardians? Just won't leave us alone, will they? Never mind the fact that I'm wearing Nilf Guardian armor right now, and. I mean, we don't need to tell them this, but we're helping Nilf Guardians, so, like. Probably want to keep that on the down low right about now. And we probably don't want to be looting things directly in front of these guys. So it looks like this is mostly just uh, another Redanian outpost of sorts. Hold on. Kind of plants. Those are actually a little bit rare. Okay. Now that. That looks cool. Where the heck is that? Oh, this is... We actually sort of crossed over into a different section here, it seems. When we crossed that bridge, or I suppose we probably should have anticipated that crossing that bridge probably meant that we were headed to a different landmass. That's probably a good dividing point. I'm thinking we probably don't want to go onto this island and explore this much yet. Otherwise, we're open up the door to even more options, and let's try to take this one step at a time here. Otherwise, I feel like, yeah, it's just going to be hard to keep track of what we have and haven't done, like I was saying earlier. So, cool to check this place out, but 
let's head back at a later date. And yeah, definitely a strong Redanian presence. I mean, they are basically trying to hold this ground, right? Stop the Milk Guardians from making their way further into the Northern Realm, so makes sense. And what with Tamaria no longer really being a thing? I guess Northern Realms these days are basically all for Redania, for the most part. Okay, so we'll head a little bit further north in that case, which means we'll probably end up checking out this town here, like we were saying earlier. Oh, that is what, Intriga Warrior? Could be fightable. They're not at full HP at the moment, so let's heal up in anticipation of that. That Stonehenge? What? Well, there's a lot of enemies here. Usually when there are Intrigas, there are multiple Intrigas. If there are multiple warriors, then that might be an issue. If they're just workers, or they are they are seemingly all warriors. That could mean trouble for us. Whoa! Hello! Um, again, it did that thing where it blew up immediately. I saw what you're trying to do there. Sort of, but not really. Go down. We definitely should have been able to dodge that, but we didn't. But you are dead, so that worked. Will you give us red meat? I don't remember. Ooh. Tighten this shell. And we got armor plates. Both those things sound like it could be useful for crafting some pretty strong armors. Those complex sugars, man. Don't mess with them. Okay. So then... We are certainly heading north. We're doing so, again, along the coastline. Which... Is leading us to... Additional enemies of... Some... Variety. The sound effect is suggesting that these are also intrigues. In this case, workers, though. These guys should be more straightforward to take down. Oh, hello. One more here. I'm assuming it's probably also a worker. Yep. Probably be. Maybe. Mm -hmm not terribly effective, but it does kind of work. That just miss, even though we had it aimed right at you? Uh, I guess, I don't know. Went slightly to the right of him. Did we got hearts? We definitely have the embryos. We've gotten those before, but I'm not sure about the hearts. Yes, we can loot some of this. Devil's Puff Ball, which is a po- or uh, not a potion, an explosive, I think. We've probably seen some stuff telling us that that is a good thing to have to fight against enemies with, but, uh, not been able to craft it, of course. At least not yet. So that should be a good addition. I think at this point we're probably headed pretty far north, to the point where we might want to cut ourselves off. We're getting so far north, in fact, that I feel like we're probably approaching the city now. Maybe the edge of it? Yeah, if we were to continue to loop around here, we are more or less as far north as you can get before you start approaching the area where you would need to cross the bridge and head into the city proper. So, for that reason, I think we probably do want to start to cut west. Well, so we could just... Do everything up to the bridge again? Sure, why not? Let's take a little sneak peek at what Novigrad has in store for us. Definitely big city. We know that much. As for what else lies ahead of it, hard to say. But yeah, so that would be the way through, it seems. But we'll pass for the time being, because we want to, I think, 
explore this area more thoroughly first. So we'll, after having checked out some of the perimeter, come now to see the interior of it. Uh, enemies of some variety here. Neckers. I mean, normal Neckers not a huge deal. That is a warrior Necker, though. So that is good to see, because we want those guys for your red mutagens, please. Hello. Goodbye. And you should not get burned by the idiot. Did you? We can change that. Okay, so did the warrior give us a red one? I don't think so. That's unfortunate. But it happens. Is this gonna also be a necker? It is. I think this is gonna be a normal one, though. Uh, Daryl? Yeah, maybe don't turn around right as the enemy is attacking you. I did not tell him to do that. He's just like, yeah, now seems a good time to feel a little bit. Is that gonna be enough? Is that not gonna be enough? It's gonna be really close. It is enough. Okay. So, were you, like, guarding anything, maybe? Like a, a monster nest or some other loot? Or not so much? It seems like the answer is not so much. Is there anything in particular that we feel like we want to make sure that we check out here? We saw, what, the edge of this little town here? We've not yet been there. Or maybe it was even this here. It was probably that. Let's double back a little bit to check that out. Or at least verify that that was that area where we saw a villager or two and thought, at some point we want to make sure that we see what the deal is there. This tree looks like it is of some importance. So large in the middle of everything. I'm suspicious of it. Okay, so there's guards here. Is it just a Rodanian outpost of some variety? Seems like that's probably the case. Yeah, and I'm not sure there's really anything for us to do here other than some very risky looting. That I'd probably rather not do. So yeah, let's let's not do that. In that case, let's not make the Redanians mad at us yet. We got plenty of time to do that. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll find a way to make it happen. So if that's not terribly interesting to us. Let's check out what's this town here. Oop, hold on, wrong button. This town here is all about. Which is basically a straight shot along this path. Is it going to be a happy town with humans in it? Or, yeah, like that's definitely a bit of a beaten down hut. That roof is not in good shape. So are we going to see monsters here instead? Possibly. Or is it just going to be an area that we can't actually go into. That's possible, too. Yeah, not much of anything. Surprise. Oh, this is just a little hut. That's actually not the thing that we were marking on our map. Okay. False alarm. What we're actually looking for would be this. Which, yeah, does look a little bit bigger. It's still only a few buildings. Can we go in here, or can we not go in here? Confirmed, we can go in here. Is there a reason to go in here? Hmm. Answer appears to be no, somewhat surprisingly. 
maybe we'll learn of someone who lives here later on and we'll convene with them at that point in time, but the moment it's basically just that bear hide. Oh, crater here maybe? Oh, and beehives as well. Beekeeper, it would seem. I suppose that's something too. That's interesting. Seen a lot of beehives, but no beekeepers. So is this your place? What's your deal? Greetings. Well, we actually look at your stock. Seen you before? Stuff was all grayed out, which suggests that we might have talked to you before. I mean, there are certainly some traveling merchants. So it's possible. This is worth two, two coins. So I don't even think it's worth holding on to it and trying to sell it to someone who values it more. Just dump it. Same with this sword that's worth eight coins. This one that's worth five. Yeah, so normally in the past we would have just opted not to pick them up at all. But as we were noting before, we had a reasonable amount of space in our inventory. So it felt like, yeah, we could do it if we really wanted to. This is just a better version of that. Sell the old one, which I think we were holding on to in case we wanted to go back to it. In case our current steel weapon got a little too beaten up. This is worth one. A whopping one coin. And five here. Yeah, so... Typically, I think we're going to find that it's not worth picking that stuff up. And... He had extra inventory space. Ah, uh, the crater disappeared, so that is terrifying. Yeah, we had the inventory space for it, so we were like, sure, okay, we'll give it a shot, but as you can see there, I think this part is completely insignificant. Any of the goose? It is a marker. So that's nice. Is this safe to loot? I think so. Oh, that was close, actually. Hello, friend. Oh, you are drunk, it would seem, and as are you. Oh, this is going to be tavern, is it not? Which might mean it could be some, eventually several people know to speak to. Hello, and keep welcome. Yeah, so we can definitely play you at Gwent, but let's see what you have first in terms of your wares. What have you got there? Might have Gwent cards, and it does look like you do. You are openly selling Fiztech. Old strategy. Old strategy. Other than that, glamour? No. Okay. Like makeup? Is that what that means? Uh, definitely some Gwent cards. I think we have one of these. One of the medics for the... Scoyatel faction. Let's take another. Medics are typically good. Gwent has crashed. Or, <laughs> Witcher has crashed. Okay, yes. And it does look like that is basically exactly what happened. We will theoretically need to reloot these items here, but if we go quickly, we might be able to do that before this guard notices us. That's actually the fast travel location that I just clicked on. That was also somewhat risky. But, let's head in here, and we hope that it doesn't crash again. Like, is this actually a legitimate bug? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh. Welcome. Trumpet. That's why. Welcome. Alright, are you going to crash when I try to buy Gwent there. cards from you? Is that a thing? Or was that merely a coincidence before? Let's maybe just take all the Gwent cards that this guy has, and ask questions later. Okay, so that's all the Gwent stuff. Now let's actually play him at Gwent. And we'll bet the usual five. I have no idea Not how good this guy is. Of Gwent. Did he just wink at us? I feel like he did. Okay, so these... This we just picked up. I recognize the name of this as one of the things that we saw listed there. What does it do? Discard after playing. Kills the strongest cards on the battlefield. Whoa! So that could be really helpful if we find ourselves in a bit of a hole where our opponent has some really strong cards and we don't have any good cards. 
That could be a bit of a swing card in that way. Okay. And I think the other one that we got was maybe... Or there was definitely a fair share of Scoia'tael. I think we got a leader card, because I saw Francesca Findebear. I think was one of the ones listed. If we change our leaders... Yeah, I'm guessing this is the starter one, where pick a Biting Frost card from your deck and play it instantly. Whereas the new one is probably this. Draw an extra card at the beginning of the battle. That sounds very good. Okay. But I still don't think we have enough to do anything other than Northern Realms right now. The question would mostly be, do we feel like we want to throw Scorch into our deck? And it does seem like it's probably a good card. Does it beat out any of the other things that we have here? Or do we just add it in as an additional card? Increase the total number of cards we have in our deck? Maybe? Say maybe the, the Siege Experts are our weakest units. Because they are just one strength, but they do boost everyone else in the Siege Row. And especially given how we're using the leader ability that doubles the Siege Row. It does create a pretty nice synergy. So I'm a little bit hesitant to pass that up. So if anything, I feel like getting rid of something, we'd probably want to get rid of something, uh, a unit in the melee or the range row. But maybe we just throw this in on top of what we already have and just have a larger deck. Let's give it a shot. This guy is playing a Scoia'tael, which is, I suppose, fitting because he's trying to sell a Scoia'tael cards. We might get Scoia'tael cards if we beat him here. So we were just talking about him. We got the Siege Expert. How is this hand looking? Okay, so we like having two of these guys, because they are the tight bond units that get double strength when we play them together. This is our medic. That's also a really good synergy. Having the medic plus the decoy allows us to basically just continue to take more and more cards from our uh, our discard pile and bring them back and play them. Commander's Horn can be good for doubling up an additional row. We have one tight bond unit of the melee variety, but not the second one. We might want to try to redraw a card in hopes of getting the second one there, or just getting rid of this guy in hopes of getting a, a higher base rank, because four is the lowest we have outside of the Siege Experts. Oh, actually, Siege, Ex Siege Expert is just one of you good enough. I'm not sure it is. Time to think of it. So the Siege Expert gives plus one to all other siege cards in a given turn so or a given round that means that since we have two other siege units at the moment that would give us three total strength when we play this guy which would be the lowest of every card we have here he would however get doubled with our leader cards that would turn into six which would then be more than most of these cards here maybe we do still keep them Blue Stripes Commando, I actually think you probably get the axe here. We'll try re-rolling you. And if we get another Blue Stripes Commando, then it sinks. We messed up, but uh, we did not. We want an Impenetrable Fog to nerf range cards. That seems like a... Well, we have a fair share of range, actually. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Instead, we got the new one. We got Scorch. Move the highest card. So let's see how it plays out. Okay, you're going melee. I think what we do this first round is we go hard on... Well, actually, what we could do. So our opponent went first. This kills the strongest card, or cards, plural, on the battlefield. Oh, so if there are multiple cards with the same value, and they're the highest-valued cards, then it would delete all of them. So, like, if our opponent played a six again, then we could delete both of them. What I was going to say was that our opponent is the only person with cards on the playing field right now. So if we play this, of course, it's going to affect our opponent. That might be nice. Maybe we wait it out, though, to see if it's necessary. This might be a little preemptive, because if we play... What I was thinking we would do is go range this round. So we play this guy. And we are still lower than him. So even if he plays another unit that's no good... Well, it's still pretty good. It's just not a very high unit. It summons more units. So we could still delete this guy. Or we could play Kira to delay another turn. Hoping that you play another six strength card so we can double delete. You didn't. You are all in on the melee room. Oh man, wow. Okay. You have a lot of these cards here that summon 
all the same types of cards from your deck and play them. Which is concerning, because I don't know if you've noticed here, but our opponent has three times as many points as we do. So we could double up these guys' strengths, or if we were to play one right now, and that would bring us up to what? 10 apiece on each of them, so it'd be 10, 10, 5, 25. We'd be close, but still not there yet. If we were to also delete a card with Scorch, then that would start to be enough. That might be worthwhile. Then we could also double up with the Commander's Horn and try to take round one, and then round two, maybe we use Stennis to get some cards back and deliberately lose in order to have card advantage for round three, in which we play Siege units. I think that's... I think that might be our best plan. Let's give that a shot. Okay, so we'll Scorch here. Get rid of his six. Ideally, we could have waited, seen if he plays another six card. Decoys to take someone out. Hmm. Okay. That's odd. That would seem to suggest that he's under the impression that he has enough strength here to already win and doesn't want to invest further. He wants to save up for future rounds. However, we of course know that that's not going to be the case. In fact, we can play just this guy, and it will be enough for us to take the lead. So we'll see how our opponent reacts to that. Doubles the row. That is what I was about to do for us. And it would still be enough for us to continue to have a lead here. But we're both going pretty hard here, which is a bit concerning. If we do not win this round, then we're not going to have much left for a subsequent round. Will you pass here? I'd like for you to pass here. You are not passing here. Card is worth zero strength, but it's a healer. So it brings back someone from your graveyard, and it is, of course, the card that we attempted to delete. That's that's not a good sign here. Um, so, like, now this is exactly what I was saying, is we're in trouble. Because what we can do... We can play a Spy, which will make our opponent stronger. It's in the melee row, no less, so it's going to get doubled, too. So this would give them 10 strength, but it would allow us to draw two cards. That basically means we're expecting to lose, so we play this in anticipation of losing. Doesn't matter if we lose by even more. However, even then, we invested some pretty strong cards. These guys and the Commander's Horn. So that, that hurt, but it might still be the best route for us to take, because otherwise, we don't have much else to just eke out a little bit more strength, try to retake the lead. We can't really do that unless we start putting things in the siege row, and that's really something we want to save for future rounds. What is your hero ability? Did you actually use it? I think you did. It is, uh... It's the one for drawing the extra card at the beginning. So it's not like you're about to draw more cards. It's not like your Northern Realms where you draw an additional card when you win a round. So... We do have a 5-4 to four card advantage. Is that reason enough for us to just take the loss, painful as it is, in round 1? I think it is. That does stink. I think we do it here. And we hope that they don't play a spy and then... Well, I guess there's no way they're going to be able to squeeze in a spy with 4 power, right? Probably not. Okay, so that means... We'll see what they do here. Ooh, that's another six strength card, which is not really what we want to see. Um, so, we might have to go Siege here. And in doing so, I think what we do is we play this one, and then we play it by ear. This will be enough to get us tied. And then we could double, we could play... How aggressive are they going? Another six. What is this indicator here? These cards? Agile. Can be placed in either close combat or range. Okay, so it's not like they're going to do anything special now. Just choosing to play them in range. What I was thinking was we could either play this guy for just a small little boost, or for going big, we play the Dun Banner Medic to get a card back from our discard pile, in which case we would. I guess it doesn't really matter which one we take. Could be any of these five strength cards, it'll all be the same because we can't. Well, can we bring back both these guys? Let's try this. We do this, we bring you back, and then what we do 
Okay, our opponent passed. So that does kind of sink. That does mean that we did end up over-investing a bit in this round. Unless we can sneak in Stennis, which we almost can. Mm. So he does give our opponent five strength, which would be too much for us to handle, just barely. We bump them up to 17, we'd still be 16. That means we would have to play in another card, except that we would get two cards from playing him. And so on the assumption that the card that we get, or at least one of the cards that we get, is better than one strength, then we should still come out ahead. Except for the other thing is that if we play a decoy, then we can get this card back in our hand, which is also something that we would very much like to be able to do, because then we can re-trigger taking someone back from our, our graveyard, which is kind of what I was trying to save for the last round, because then we would have the ability to have two of these guys again, and suddenly we have a lot of strength, even though we don't have a lot of cards remaining. So, we're in a bit of a pickle here. I guess we do this. Let's try this. If we do that, let's get you back. Then, we could even play Stennis now and just see what we get in terms of our next cards. Let's try that. We go Stennis. We're down by six now, which is pretty significant. However, we did get some decent cards here. So if we were to say play Death Mold here, then we would be tied, which is obviously not enough. But if we were to play Gun Banner Medic, and then bring something back from our graveyard, then we would very much win, and we would still have a three to two card advantage with some decent, albeit not fantastic cards. At that point, hit one Siege Expert would be pretty darn weak because there wouldn't be many Siege units to go along with them. So, hmm. What is the best route for us to take then in that case? Is it actually better to go Death Mold plus? Hit one Siege Expert. That way, we can hold on to Gun Banner Medic for the next round. I feel like that might actually be preferable. Even if it's fewer cards, it's better cards. You can bring back Death Mold with the Siege Medic is probably what we do, because I think he's the highest value card we have played thus far. Will have played at that point. Yeah, let's do that. Are we overthinking this? Almost certainly. Will it come back to bite us? Very well may. But... Now we are in the lead, so we can pass here. We will get another card as well from winning a round as Northern Realms. That is our additional perk. And we've not yet used our leader ability, whereas our opponent has. That is good. So we go first here. Let's, I mean, I guess we start with the melee, because why not? And we just hope that our opponent doesn't have any amazing cards up their sleeve. Seems like they don't have any more... Ooh, hold on. They don't have any more of the Dwarven Skirmishers to muster from their deck. So fortunately, that did not become much of a factor here. Continue to go down the melee route. What is their last card? It's going to nerf melee, which will affect them just as much as it affects us. And we have more cards than they have in the melee row, so we are still in the lead here. We have one. But just to show you what I was saying, the reason why I wanted to have this card was because then we could bring back something for the next round from our graveyard. Put in the siege row is actually even better. I didn't even realize we had this guy in our graveyard. The reason why we do that is because in the siege row, we can double things with our leader ability. So now we've definitely won. And there you have it. Had me nervous there for quite a bit, actually. Plague Maiden. Ooh. Okay. That sounds maybe a little unpleasant, but I'm pretty sure that was red, meaning it is a monster card. Sounds like it's probably a monster card. Plague Maiden is you. You're just a normal five strength unit. Alright. I mean, we just generally need more cards for monsters, so that's fine. 